Well, there's a vote on Patreon, and the winner of the vote was The Town Inside Me from Guilty Gear Strive. This looks like there's lyrics in it. I'm excited to break them down, and I'm very curious to hear what this sounds like, so let's check it out. The town inside me, and everyone's voice. Only I'm not there, just watching from afar. I can't go home, because I'm afraid something will change. Without me, I'm the one to blame. Huh? There, there's, like, I knew that there was hardcore rock in Guilty Gear, but there's pop. Also, is this a teenager? It looks like one. I don't like the town inside me and everyone's voice. Only I'm not there, just watching from the bar. I can go home because I'm afraid something will change. Me without me, I'm the one to blame. Oh, this is absolutely insane. <laughs> I think I want to play Guilty Gear because I didn't realize it was music like this. I'm not averse to rock, but this is pleasant. The town inside me and everyone's voice, only I'm not there. Just watching from afar. I can't go home because I'm afraid something will change. Me without me, I'm the one to blame. I've moved on by my own will. I had nothing else I wanted to do. It wasn't hard, but I didn't hate it. I did uh, not even like it. I've been patient, but it was bearable. I've I've had a gray haze for a long time, though. I never found out what it was. I It's my stress. That's for sure. I never wanted to run away. I was very motivated. Then what is this feeling? Who would I ask? Bridget doesn't have anybody to lean on. And she leans on herself. She's a teenager. She's like trying to figure out what the hell this whole, this world's all about. I'm afraid to change. So I don't want to go home because then I wouldn't be who I've like discovered who I am. Me without me, I'm the one to blame though. That's a confusing line. I moved on by my own will. I had nothing else I wanted to do. It wasn't hard, but I didn't hate it. I, I did not even like it. That's confusing. It wasn't hard to move on. I, I didn't hate it, uh, but I didn't really like it. It's like, well, it's it's very, 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 like, all over the place, which is, uh, you know, super teenage. I mean, think about it. We all went through our teenage years. Some of you maybe are even in your teenage years now, and it's a hard time period to be in. It's like, who am I? What is this? What am I supposed to be doing? This music with the, with the bass and with this, like, it's pop. It doesn't ever really, like, peak even the chorus. There's no, like, bump in intensity here. We kind of, like, stay the same. It's like a real, like, internal monologue of, like, well, who am I? What the hell is this life all about? I don't know what the hell I'm doing. The Singing is amazing by Aisha. 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 There's a real like playful nature here that I, I love. I'm not waiting for Santa Claus. I already have the gift, just can't always in the box. I know all about it. No one can solve it. Unless I decide to do something about it It's not even a case I've been patient, but it was bearable I've had the gray haze for a long time though I never found out what it was I I hate the alarm clock I chose The town is like me And everyone's voice
<laughs> I loved that. So uh, I was wrong. There obviously is a peak and there is something really intense there. And also there was a lot more instrumentation there, which is really interesting. You added electric guitar, bass, piano. It's like it like built up to something. It was almost like Bridget has this uh, like a bit of an outburst as she's trying to navigate things. Uh, I'm kind of curious what the lore of this character is. Hailing from England, Bridget was born to a wealthy aristocrat soon after her twin brother. In a town convinced that male twins brought misfortune, the town's people were so embedded in this superstition that they insisted the younger of any set of male twins be put to death or given up for adoption. Bridget's parents were unwilling to lose one of their children, and so they chose to raise Bridget as a daughter instead of a son, hiding her sex from the public eye. As the child of multi-billionaire parents, Bridget was given the best training and tutoring as a child, exactly the upbringing expected for the daughter of a high society couple. Bridget loved her parents and so did her utmost to keep them from worrying for her, but she could see that the charade, as necessary as it was, filled them with guilt, for they felt they were forcing her to live a certain way, yet the harder she tried, the less effective her efforts became. They didn't believe her. She began to think of leaving the village and that behaving as a man and bringing wealth to the village would convince her hometown that their superstitions were unfounded and thus free her parents from guilt. In 2181, almost as if on cue, Bridget found a bounty poster for a gear that promised a $50,000 bounty for her death. She wasted no time in setting out, leaving her parents' manor and made her way to the forest of demons. To her surprise, Dizzy had already been defeated. Somewhat discouraged but not ready to give up, Bridget began to look for other bounties and hope that she might still find a way to resolve her problems. The story continues. Wow, so essentially, I wasn't completely off. I mean, it was like a sort of coming of age, trying to figure out who the hell, well, I didn't I say who the hell am I? Huh, that's fascinating. So every character in Guilty Gear has a story. Hmm, this is worth exploring for sure. Yeah, that was really fun. I'm really glad that I heard it. There's a lot more Guilty Gear that will probably end up on the channel, that's for sure. You know, fighting games have really interesting themes. In Guilty Gear especially, it seems like they really serve a purpose, which I'm not used to. So feel free to check out more and I'll talk to you later. Bye.